What's up, folks? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm sorry for the delay. I was trying to gather some content for this video, um, night vision versus thermal type thing. And we really didn't need to compare night vision with what I'm using. There's really no argument there. Uh, and you're going to see in this video what I'm talking about. But uh, anyways, we are here with the dual RH25s on my helmet. And uh, this has been a huge upgrade from my dual MH25. So uh, I did a video, I think about two years ago. I can't remember how long ago I did that video, but I did a video on my lid with dual uh, MH25s. Great setup. I hunted with that thing for a really long time. Very successful in the field with it. Uh, they now have a V2 version, which we're probably going to talk about here pretty soon. Uh, but I, I don't think the V2s are going to replace the RH25s. Uh, if you've seen the footage that I've shared in the past with the RH25s or some of the content that is being shared on an IG or anywhere else, uh, the clarity uh, is um, for, for, for the size and the features, uh, it's unbeatable. Uh, I, I really, really feel like this is a perfect setup for what I am doing. Uh, I'm not going to say that this is the best setup for the guys out there that are operating at nighttime, night shoots, stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't work like that. I use this thing strictly for spotting, uh, 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 navigating, and recovering animals. That's where this thing comes into play. So this is strictly a hunting setup, and this is what I use every single night when I go out hunting. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the lid here. I want to want to go over a few things here, and uh, also talk about a safety thing, uh, a safety concern of mine uh, to a lot of people that are getting into lids. Um, I had an individual come by the shop this week that was uh, wanting to. He was getting a set up for a whole lid, and immediately I saw him strapping up. And guys, uh, I, this is just me uh, from experience uh, and from what I've seen from other people uh, on social media with neck injuries. Uh, guys, this helmet with everything on here, the counterweight, my ear pro, exactly the way you see it, it's 5.2 pounds. Uh, guys, if something was to happen, which it does, I've hit trees, I've hit washouts, uh, I've been in high racks where we swerved into a ditch. Uh, crazy things can happen. All that energy and weight is going to go forward, back, whichever way your body's being thrown, and this helmet's going to be strapped to your head, and that could possibly break your neck or hurt your neck, okay? And I've hurt my neck in the past, so I never wear my, my straps. Um, I'm, I'm not telling you you don't have to. Uh, you shouldn't. I'm not saying that, but uh, it's more of a hazard than anything. Uh, I will wear it every once in a while uh, when I feel like I absolutely need to, but it's very, very rare you will see me strapped up, all right? Uh, and this is one of the main reasons why I wear a Team Windy helmet. I know a lot of people want to get political and whatever. I don't even listen to that shit. Um, the ratchet system that we have back here, it's like a tension strap. I don't know exactly what they call it. I, I, I It's somewhere online. We'll find it. I'll Google it and I'll put it down in the description. Um, but you can turn this, you pop it out to loosen it up and then you snap it in and you can literally tighten up the straps inside the helmet around the back side of your head and it will, will lock that helmet down on your head. And if something was to happen, it'll just fly right off. Okay. Um, Angelo, hopefully Angelo watches this video. Angelo had a situation where he, they hit a washout and he was in the back of the truck and his helmet went flying. And that's a good thing. You want it to you wanted to go airborne. But anyways, I just wanted to share that for the guys that are getting into this, okay? Um, Team Windy Helmet. Uh, this is the x uh Tactical Bump LTP. Um, I have a carbon as well. I have four of these. Um, and the other ones got the straps cut off. I left this one alone because it's kind of new, all right? Uh, and this one is in black. Um, we have an Agilite uh, lid cover here. Uh, Agilite, Ag Agilite, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, we have a Princeton light here on the side uh, that comes in two two colors here. So we got red and should have a white. I'm not sure. There we go. There goes the white light. All right. Um, got white light. 
This is perfect for me. I don't need something stupid bright. Uh, I just need it good enough for me to check on locks or working on equipment in the field or something like that. I don't want a crazy bright light and the battery life lasts a really long time. It just takes one small little CR123. Uh, MSA Sordance for EarPro. EarPro is critical, especially for you guys that are not running uh, suppressors. Um, even running suppressed, uh, I still wear it, um, especially when my buddies are next to me and they're shooting as well. Um, best bang for the buck, I think, the MSA Sordans. Uh, I still think the Howard Lights are the best ear pro in the market uh, as far as price and quality and sound. Um, that can be debated, and you can argue all you want, but you, it's hard to argue in, uh, Howard Lights. But the Howard Lights look really stupid on here, and uh, the MSA Sordans had a really cool technical look to it, okay? Uh, and they're, they're electronic, okay? Um, we have the uh, Unity. Um, I cannot remember the name of the mount here, guys. I will probably drop it in the description. I wish I, I knew it off the top of my head, um, but that's what I'm using here to uh, mount my MSA Sordans to my lid, okay? That's exactly what I'm using. Um, in the back, we have a counterweight here, um, two plates, and then some smaller uh, rectangle weights that go across the, the back back here. And that's what I have for a counterweight. And um, G24 mount here. And we have a, um, <laughs> it's, there's like two different names uh, now, but they're not even available anymore. Uh, I got a brain fart. Let me get a break here and I'll get right back to you. RQE, RQE KVC, it, it gets confusing. Uh, RQE KVC bridge is what I'm using here. And guys, these are extremely hard to find. It, it is what it is. The key to running dual RH25s or dual MH25s is being able to adjust. Um, and um, let me collapse them down so I can show you exactly what part I'm talking about here. Right back here, and I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a little adjustment deal. Uh, when you turn that down or up, it will adjust the width. Uh, where the thermals are mounted okay so you want to be it, we're all different oh well, that sun is coming out uh, i had somebody send me a dm that was straight up bitching about me talking about the rqe and kvc bridge uh not having enough uh, adjustment going in i'm sorry if a lot of you guys have narrow eyes if your eyes are one inch apart i am a, I'm, I'm so sorry uh for your disability <laughs> um not everybody's face is the same. And so it, you got to get your thermals adjusted properly for you to, for you to be able to um, have a good experience in the field with these thermals. Uh, if you got a fixed bridge and you throw these on, it's going to be a very, very good chance that uh, you're going to get all squiggly eyed and it's, it's going to, it's going to, it's not going to be comfortable. Uh, so whenever I have these things adjusted properly the way they are right now, this is exactly the width that I need. And I'm not sure if my phone is even focused on that, but uh, the width that I have right here is a hundred percent perfect for me. And when I look through it, it's really hard for me to explain, but the only way, the only way I can explain it is uh, back in the days when we used to play with those little things, the, I, can't, I don't even know the name of them. It was like a little toy that you put up to your eyes and you'd be able to flip the thing and it could show you all the pictures. It Everything comes into one box for me. So both units come in equally and I don't have anything in the middle that is splitting up the image. So when everything comes together, this is exactly what I'm looking at when I'm looking through, the therm through my dual RH25s. And I have a squared rectangled box of thermal imagery right here. And I'm just scanning in the fields left and right. It is really cool. It's really cool. And it's hard for me to explain. Uh, I had several friends that come out and they're like, hey, Hamilton, can I please look through that? And so I'll pop it off or I'll just hand it to them like this so they can look through it. And they'll look and then be like, okay, I get it now. Now I know why this is so freaking awesome. So uh, anyways. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, this is the RQE KVC bridge. You don't have to run this bridge. They're almost, they're almost impossible to find. Uh, but any type of bridge out there that allows you to have some type of adjustment is going to be the key to this. 
Um, also, you're going to be able to, you're going to need the mount for the um, RH25s. I don't know exactly the part number off the top of my head. There is another one uh, that allows uh, you to flip one unit over upside down. That way, uh, the battery pack doesn't collide with the next unit over. So you're gonna your battery pack will be on the opposite side. I will share that part number down in the description for you guys. Um, anyways, enough of me talking. I know a lot of guys out there have already seen videos and um, detailed information about the RH25s. Um, what I'm going to share is a hunt that I recently just had. Um, there were some pigs hanging out in the woods next to the silage spot, and uh, I turned my, my RH25s on, and I just I started recording with it, and it's going to be a little shaky, but you're going to see me moving around and scanning the field, and you're going to see these pigs, and that's exactly how I spotted these pigs. Now, if I was running night vision, guys, I don't care what spec your tubes are. I don't care what badass IR you have. I honestly don't care what setup you have for night vision. I got $500 that says that you would not be able to spot those pigs in those woods. I don't know about 500, maybe 50 bucks. <laughs> but spotting those pigs in the brush is almost impossible with night vision. And thermal is where it's king. So whenever I'm scanning, I'm looking around. These animals are invisible. They're, they're invincible. They're invisible with night vision. They're blending into the terrain. There's a lot of shade in there, so it's really dark. If you don't have a good moon, you're going to be struggling with that night vision. And that's why I run thermal so much so I can find these animals. I killed three of them running the bolt gun, six millimeter Creedmoor. I shot two. Two little ones come running down through the ditch. I shot one on a run, soaked it up like a sponge. It doesn't look like it, guys, but right at the last second, you're going to see that pig just lunge over the edge. And that's where she died. Uh, if you see my stories or the stories that I shared on YouTube, you're going to see where I got my buggy stuck. It was that same night that I buried my buggy. Uh, and I had all three pigs in the back of my buggy. That's about moments later. I had all three bu uh, pigs in the back of my buggy. Uh, and it was a clean pass through too. It went through the lung and came out the shoulder over here. And she still ran off and, and dumped herself into the brush. But also right after all that shooting, I start scanning around and looking, always scanning and looking after I shoot, a coyote pops out. And I get set up and I thought I had a money shot on this coyote and I missed. And I watched that video a dozen times and that bullet grazed right over that coyote's head. I don't know what happened to my zero. It was compromised somewhere. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm not blaming it on the gun. Uh, but if you look at my hold, my hold was solid for that range, especially with six millimeter Creedmoor. Uh, I just missed. It was a clean miss and that coyote ran off. So uh, without the RH-25s, I wouldn't have had that opportunity on that coyote as well. Uh, you just wouldn't be able to pick that up with night vision. And that is the reason why I run dual RH-25s. Enough talking. Here's the footage. All right. So right here, I'm creeping in. Um, I spotted him almost immediately when I got to the gate. The shaking is from the uh, walking and I was about to calibrate right there. It calibrated and I'm just scanning, looking around, making sure there's no other pigs in the area. And now I'm trying to get closer. So now I'm closing in and I'm coming up to a gate. They're just behind the corner of that fence there on the other side of the hill. So I flip my nods up, jump over the gate, just give it a sec here just getting skyline now I'm gonna flip it back down and there they go it's time to close in on the other side of the fence now and I am exactly 50 yards uh, away from the pigs from the first shot uh, I was exactly 50 yards now I'm just scanning looking around making sure the coast is clear. I don't have any horses nearby. Uh, that's my rifle. Point it right at them. It's time to shoot.
I actually hit that pig and you're gonna see here right there she just leaps over the edge there and falls down near the creek and that's where I recovered her this was less than five minutes after I shot those pigs and I'm not sure what happened here uh, either it was just a clean miss right over his head or this coyote got a really nasty flesh wound A little bit more scanning here. You're gonna see the rifle, barrel still warm, hot suppressor, cold tripod legs. Looking around, seeing if anything else pops out. On my way back with the buggy right now and the surviving piglets are running in the same direction uh, the coyote ran off to. So I'm just sitting there watching them, the buggy, and uh, off they go up the hill. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, that was, again was the six millimeter Creedmoor with 95 grain uh, burgers, a classic hunter. Uh, talked about that rifle already and uh, optic I was using was the IRA USA Infrared Outdoor uh, RS75. Um, guys, again, this helmet, uh, it's, it's, it's a no brainer for me. Uh, there's been plenty of times I've been out hunting and I forgot my helmet and I went back home. I just shut it down for the night. I cannot hunt without this setup. It allows me to get things done really quick. And uh, guys, I remember my first time running dual thermals. Uh, this was back with the MH25s. I remember going into an area that I knew we had pigs and I was driving with the dual RH, uh, MH25s and I, I was in my old buggy so I didn't have any doors. And I looked off to my right and there was a pig in the brush, maybe 30 yards from the buggy just sitting still. He didn't move. He was waiting for me to pass on by. If I was wearing night vision, I would have never seen that pig. And I just reached over with my rifle and I shot him right there through the cab and dropped that board. Uh, I have not, I'm not knocking night vision. Night vision has its place. It's a wonderful piece of equipment to have. Uh, but it, when it comes to uh, spotting, detecting, uh, identifying, stuff like that, thermal is the way to go when it comes to hunting. You guys got to really understand that. I hunt here. Um, I, I'm not trying to play um, tactical guru here. I'm not an operator. Uh, I'm not a night larper. I'm, I'm not that guy. Uh, I need to be able to find animals, and uh, I'm finding these animals really quick with the dual RH25s that I'm wearing on my helmet. Now, again, not everybody is fortunate to have a buggy that you can flip up the glass. Uh, but if you if you're in a vehicle in a truck. Uh, I understand where you need the night vision. Night vision is going to be great for you to navigate with. Uh, Rich and uh, Estian over up in East Texas, uh, they're running an MH25 and a PVS-14. They use the PVS-14 to drive and navigate, and then when it's time to start looking for animals, they'll flip down the MH20, uh, RH25 and start scanning fields. Some folks claim they can do it at the same time. Uh, it's... For me, it wasn't for me. I tried it several times and it just never played out really well for me. Uh, but I understand why you need night vision, but uh, running the duels is the ticket for me. And it's not a cheap setup. Uh, guys, this, this setup here is probably right around 12 grand. All right. It's not cheap to run a setup like this. If you want to save a little bit of money, you can't go wrong with the older MH25s or the MH25B2, which has audio. Uh, and a eyepiece that comes with the unit now, so you don't have to get an aftermarket eyepiece, PBS-14 uh, eyepiece for the older uh, MH25. The V2 comes with its own eyepiece now that you can wear with your helmets, all right? Uh, enough of me talking. I just wanted to share that with you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to do my best to get some more content here rolling really soon. We have a 223 bolt action that I am having fun with. Uh, Impact action, uh, Christensen Arms 20-inch uh, 223 barrel, uh, the Arter Creek Labs Polonium on it, uh, and the XRS chassis, Trigger Tech Trigger. It is a sweet little rig. Feel, I, I just giggled like a little kid when I was shooting it. So uh, we're going to probably talk about that uh, rig on the next YouTube video. I will see you guys soon. Hopefully soon. Hopefully I'm not dragging this shit out another week or two weeks. We need to hurry up and get this shit done. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon.